shake some hands. We're going to sing He Keeps Me Singing. So uh, welcome some visitors. I see some. It's good to have everybody. Thank you, Kyle. Good to see you all here this morning. Uh, good looking crowd. I appreciate you deciding to come on this cool uh, spring day to God's house. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Would you be praying for uh, our service today that God would work in an unusual way? Maybe souls would be saved. Maybe someone would be drawn closer to the Lord and, and um, that we would grow spiritually because of the experience. Maybe God could do something we've never seen before. Wouldn't that be something? And say, that was God that was here with us. So join with me, if you would, in prayer as we uh, prepare. Mike Browning, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Man. Thank you. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements I want to make uh, this morning. Uh, I hope you'll be praying for our post-prom activity that will be on the, uh, uh, be the 3rd of May, I think. Is that right? Uh, or is it the 4th? It's the 4th. Okay, I'm trying to get, it's a Saturday night. Uh, two weeks from last night is actually when that will occur. And we today, now I want you all to look up here. And pay attention. I'm going to give you some directions here, all right? Uh, we're going to take our regular offering here like we normally do um, in just a few moments. And then at the end of the service, we're going to have our ushers, someone back here in the offering place back here for the post-prom collection. If you want to give um, for the post-prom and that will go specifically for that, then you can give as you go out, okay? Now, you got it? I don't have to do this again, do I? Okay, all right. 
and I'll remind you of it as at the end of the service. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have a meeting of the Constitution Committee uh, at 3 o'clock, is that right, here at, here at the church. I also want to announce that on the 11th of uh, May, on a Saturday morning, at the cafe here in town, we're going to have a men's meeting and just a prayer breakfast and want you to come and we'll just order off the menu. have got the room reserved back there and I've got someone who's going to come and speak to uh, the men on that Sunday or that Saturday morning. I know that's the day before Mother's Day, but you got to get it done sometime, all right? So it'll be a busy and just come and eat breakfast. We won't be there very long and be an opportunity for men to fellowship together, all right? Um, I want to remind you of our service tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, goodness, we've got Bible school going to be coming at us very quickly. Um, won't be long. Summer will be here, and I'm ready for it to warm up a little bit. Um, we almost turned on the air conditioning. I heard about it that we didn't, by the way. But it was just about warm enough in the house for me. And um, so um, it's going to be cool today. Um, but I'm thankful for you being here today. Um, and our visitors, we're glad to have you. I'm glad you chose to come and visit with us. Now I'm going to ask our ushers if you'd come forward this morning, and we're going to take our morning offering. Have I forgot anything that I need to? I, I feel like I have, but that would not be nothing unusual if I forgot. All right, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we need you today. We need you every day. Sometimes we don't realize that we get so busy in life and we forget to ask your presence and your guidance. But I pray today here that you would be um, in this service, that your Holy Spirit we know is here already because we have the Holy Spirit within us, those of us who are saved. But I pray that you might reveal yourself in an unusual way today. I pray that if someone's lost here today, that they might receive you on the terms of the gospel. Maybe hearts that have not been as close as they ought to, that they'll be warmed up. Maybe people who uh, need to join this church and feel that leadership, I pray, God, that your will would be done. And I pray, God, you'd help me as I speak. I have no ability, and um, I just pray that you'd help me. Bless this offering. Bless the giver. and Help us to use it in a way that will be honoring to you. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. So this next song we're going to do, we've done it once before, and I, I kind of need the guys really to help me out here because we're doing that song, You Are Holy, Prince of Peace, where the, girl, the girls kind of echo us, okay? So guys, let's don't let these girls show us up here, okay? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and try it. Oh, 
and stand with us as we sing as the deer. back and see everybody. Um, most of you are probably going to know this song. Um, I'll just show you what it is. It's How Great Thou Art. And just sing it with me. Feel free. Just worship him with this this morning. So.
sent him to die I scarce can take it in and that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin it sings my Shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? And then I will bow in humble adoration and there proclaim. be Thank you, Cassidy. Thank you for coming and being here with us today and singing that song. I've heard it sung by a lot of people, but I didn't hear it any better than I did this morning. Thank you for being here. She is my third cousin, by the way. That explains some of it, I think, in spite of it, maybe. Well, this morning, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Ezekiel, the second chapter. Ezekiel, the second chapter. Yesterday, and if any day, um, if you listen to the news, but yesterday morning particularly, um, I had actually went down to uh, West Frankfurt to get the best donuts in the world, the Dixie Cream Donuts there at West Frankfurt for breakfast. And when I was coming back, I um, was listening to the news on a Christian station. But as I was listening to the news, I thought to myself, my, our world is in such a horrible, horrible situation, it seems like, doesn't it? Would you agree? I mean, um, war, it seems like, is intimate there in the Middle East, and I believe all of this is biblical to a large degree. I don't understand it all completely. And then in this country, there is such turmoil that is going on, calling right wrong, wrong right, and I, I just, it, it seems like that I can't believe what I'm hearing. Now, you think this is the worst time we've ever seen in this world. No, it's not. It's not. There have been tragedies. In this lesson today, or in the second chapter of Ezekiel, I want to give you just a little bit of background of what's going on here. Ezekiel was a priest and the nation of Israel has been taken captive by the nation of Babylon. They were a world power. 
He is a contemporary to Daniel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. And Ezekiel has been called, he's been taken captive also, and he is to speak to the nation of Israel in their captivity. And God is, what God is doing is sending Ezekiel to this rebellious people. And you'll see in this passage that it's mentioned, I think, five or six times in ten verses that they were a rebellious people. Now, in thinking about that, I want to ask you a question. Are you rebellious? Am I rebellious? You know, either you are or you aren't. Isn't that really true? Yeah, you know, uh, either you are obedient or you're not obedient. And I think we as Christians, we gravitate sometimes to rejection of what God wants for our lives. We struggle with things in our lives. We lose sight of the fact that God is in control. Have you had that problem? I have. This week, I'll share this with you. Um, and I have the radio on to um, uh, American Family Radio generally, and I was listening to David Jeremiah this week. And he's been preaching about putting on the whole armor of God. Great message. It's a great passage uh, that you all are familiar with. But he made a statement, and preachers, I think, sometimes um, need to show that they're human just like everybody else, and I like that. I remember Vernon Gee one time, McGee, he told, told something. I was riding a tractor, had the radio on the fender. It's a wonder I can hear anything today. But that's been 40 years ago. And I remember and first started listening to him, and he endeared himself to me when he related the fact that he had brokenness and heartache in his life. Uh, made me see him differently. And David Jeremiah this week did that in a very, um, no, you had to catch it. But he made this statement that he said, even in my own life, he said, I want to confess to you that I don't always put on the whole armor of God. I don't always trust God in every moment of every day. Oh, I was glad to hear that. I was glad to hear that. But he said, the problem is, is not God, it's me. And this week, I've had another hard week. I don't know what the next one's going to be like, but I remember... One night this week, I awoke in my sleep, and I was thinking about all the things that was going on in my life, and I almost wanted to just tremble because I don't know how I'm going to deal with all of it. You know what I'm talking about? Family and finances and work and, and people and the responsibility of, of this church. I'll just be honest with you. I told Kay this morning, I said, I'm getting ready to go do something that I know I can't do. God's going to have to do it. But at the same time, God's been faithful this week. And this week, as I was listening to Dr. Jeremiah, the Holy Spirit seemed to say to me that it's not about me. It is about me having a pure heart about what I'm doing and trusting the Lord and you, even though it may not be the best way um, in the secular life, but if you've got a pure heart, the God, God, the Holy Spirit can take that and make that work. And I thought, wow, that'll work today. I can trust that. And so in this passage here, we're going to look at Ezekiel. God's calling him out. For a special work at a special time. And the title of my message, Call to Success or Faithfulness. There will be some preachers you may have heard this morning on TV that God's called you to success. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That God's never promised you success. He's just called you and he's equipped you to do what he wants you to do. And sometimes we get blessings here. But ultimately God is calling us to faithfulness to faithfulness in our daily life. Now, I'm going to go through this passage a little bit, and then I'm going to come back to this. And I want to look at it and relate it, hopefully, to what you, how you and I can deal with this, all right? So we look at Ezekiel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to ask you to stand as we read God's Word. Would you do that for me? Thank you. Now, 
he said to me, God said to me, to Ezekiel, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered uh, when he uh, spoke to me and set my, me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. This is why they're in the mess they're in, by the way. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are an impotent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. Wow, what a promise. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwelled among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their looks. Isn't that interesting? The looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I have given you. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it was lamentations and mournings and woe. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, what a passage. What a call on the life of a man who was faithful in a difficult day, in a difficult time. Lord, we're here today, and it is difficult times. But you would use some way. I don't have the ability to accomplish it, but I pray that you might speak to us and call us to faithfulness greater than we have this past week. There are some here today who are dealing with problems that are so difficult. I know that. But yet I know that you are able to bring them through and give them peace in the midst of the storm. And I pray that you'd help us to just begin to more and more trust upon you day by day. Lord, speak to us today. May your Holy Spirit be real to us. And we'd know that we'd been in the house of God today because you had visited us. I pray if anyone's lost here, God, that somehow you might stir their hearts, that they might accept you today. Maybe some Christian that maybe needs to move out for you. I don't know what you are doing in the lives. I've seen some things that are going on in the lives of Christians here, and I believe you're moving. I pray, God, you'd help us to be faithful to you. Bless your word. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Excuse me one moment, please. God's call in your life is not a guarantee of success, but rather a call by God personally, personally to you to be faithful. Faithfulness is the call on every life in Christ, period. <laughs> okay? Now, I want you to look at some things that I think when you look in the first chapter of the book of Ezekiel, if you could understand uh, exactly what Ezekiel saw. I believe that God, God revealed himself to him. I don't even know if, if Ezekiel understood all that he saw about the wheels and the inside the wheels and, and all of that. There's some relation to that to the book of Revelation. But God was in control. I think that it was what Ezekiel needed, and God was revealing himself to him so that when he called him, he would have confidence in who called him. Boy, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it, if we had that kind of confidence. And so he then begins in the second chapter to call him out. Now, this calling that he's making in his life is not real encouraging, is it? You would have to say, I don't know if I want this job or not. But Ezekiel, because I think God had revealed himself in a unique way in chapter 1 and then goes on in chapter 3 to reveal himself. And he did what God wanted him to do. 
Ultimately, Ezekiel died in captivity. He didn't see the people taken back. There was some hope among the people at this time that they may go back to Jerusalem and the temple had not been destroyed, but it would be destroyed and there would be no, not much hope for them. And they would be in captivity for almost 70 years in Babylon. We know that Daniel was in captivity. You know his story. And so God had brought judgment upon them because of their rebellious and impotent attitude. Now, impotent means they had no respect for anybody else but themselves. Boy, are we living in a day that is similar to that. And that we, we, we grab hold of, of, of the material things that are in our lives. And folks, if, if you look at our world, isn't it shaky? I, uh, I heard, I don't know if this relates to this, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I was talking to a guy who uh, works for the county, and he has health insurance by the county, but the, the family part of it is um, not paid for by the county. And he told me that for his wife and his son to carry that insurance is $2,100 a month. Wow. How people who don't have insurance. I mean, this is just some of the things that are going on. And I don't believe I've ever seen inflation like we were seeing now. I've been around a while, all right? And, and I, when I look at, at things that I buy, I bought some chocolate milk the other day. A half gallon was $5.50 a half gallon. You know what that computes into per gallon? 11 bucks. Who would have ever thought, but I bought it. <laughs> I like chocolate milk. I had a talk with my uh, cardio per person Monday, and I asked her, I said, is it, what do you think about me drinking this chocolate milk? She said, well, I really don't see any problem with it, but you might cut back just a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, when you see what's going on in our world, and, and those things are unique in themselves, the cost of so many things, but what we're seeing in society, where I believe that our nation is beginning to turn their back upon the nation of Israel. And I believe this is biblical. I believe it is wrong. I believe, I have a friend <clears throat> who is a good Bible scholar. I have great respect for him. Talk with him two or three times a week. But he has lost the idea that, that the nation of Israel is God's chosen people. I don't know how he has got to that, all right? I believe that they are God's chosen people. Now, I want to clarify that. In the Old Testament, God set aside these people. They, the people here today are descendants. And I believe the land is important, too, there in Israel. And we are seeing our nation gravitating away from that support. You, have you seen it? And I believe it's wrong. I believe we need to stand with the nation of Israel. Now, let me clarify this just a little bit. Today, the bulk of Israelites who are dying are dying and going to a devil's hell because they have rejected Jesus Christ. But God still has his hand on that nation. We know that when we look in the book of Revelation. And so... Yes, I don't totally understand it, but God is watching over that nation. And I think that when you see what's going on with the warfare, that God has, used, has protected them in unusual ways. So it's phenomenal. So, but Ezekiel is living in a day where it looks like things are really bad, and they are. And we are living in that day also. And I want to look at just a few things here very quickly. First of all, the Spirit entered Ezekiel. Look at verse 2. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. This is an unusual passage that <clears throat> the Holy Spirit did not indwell believers than those who are trusting in God for salvation. That was a different day. They were, they were 
shedding the blood of these animals as a substitute for a Messiah that would one day come. There was always a remnant who was believing there would be a Messiah come, and they would no longer have to shed the blood of animals. When Jesus died, remember he, the veil of the temple torn in two and did away with all of that sacrificial worship. I'm glad it did, aren't you? And I think that, that here he had the Holy Spirit indwelling him in an unusual way and empowering him. Now, we today as Christians, when we are saved, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Have you felt him this week? Have you been reading your Bible and maybe the Holy Spirit speak to you while you were reading your Bible or as you were going down the road, as you were meditating and praying, how God revealed to you some things that you didn't otherwise know? It happened to me this week. So I know I have the Holy Spirit, which proves to me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. But he also convicts me sometimes also. And so this Holy Spirit empowered him. Now, I don't know how long the Holy Spirit remained in him, but we know that he got enough to be faithful. Now, I thought about <clears throat> if God would speak to me, in an unusual way, and I, but I, at the same time, I think about God has spoke to me. In salvation, he came to me and revealed himself and convicted me of my lostness, and when I called upon him, he saved me. And then I have the Scripture that I know that God um, was a true historical figure, but he was the Savior who came and died on the cross. I have all of this information. I have the Old Testament. All of this is important for us to understand so that we uh, know that God's been working. We know that he did, he has, and he will. And what more do we need, ladies and gentlemen? God's revealed himself to us, and so the Spirit entered Ezekiel, he knew him, and then he made a commitment, I believe, to him to be faithful, to be the prophet that he wanted to be. Now, look what he says to him. He said, you're called, Ezekiel was called to a rebellious people. And so are we. I mean, I mean, people, well, well what, how do you know what's right and wrong? How do you know whether there's a God? Now, I got enough questions about the Bible to wor worry about those, all right? There, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I don't understand. I had a conversation this week with someone about that, that someone was asking a question about angels and you know, where, here's one for you. I'll just blow your mind this morning. Where did evil come from? Was it created by God? No, but it exists, doesn't it, in our universe? Interesting. Well, so there is a rebellious people, and we have it today. We're called. We are, we are in a world where it seems like that God is alien to most people. And there are many people, by the way, who believe in a God, but they got the wrong belief in a wrong Jesus. Yeah. You got to get the story of Jesus right, that he was a Savior who took upon himself the sins of the whole world. And the only way to salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not of works, lest, lest anyone should boast. Whew. I'm glad for that, aren't you? That little lift the load off your shoulder real quick. And so I'm saved. I know I'm saved by the grace of God, and God's in control. What else do I need? I got the book. I got everything. Um, Ezekiel, later on in chapter 3, uh, he, this scroll that wrote out that God told him to take and eat of the scroll. Sounds a little weird, doesn't it? But it was pretty good because he later said that it was good to me. It was like a, in verse 3 of chapter 3, so I ate and was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. I want to ask you, what do you think about the Bible? Do you look at it and say, oh, I don't want to read it this morning. I know I need to listen to the preacher. I know I need. My friend, and we're all guilty of that at times. But my friend, we ought to love the Word of God. We ought to love the truth of God being proclaimed by preachers all across this country that are faithful to the Word of God and say, I like that, and understand the things of God have value to our society. I mean, our society is turning its back on that. Look what we have. And I think it's a struggle 
that we have that we're in the midst of all of this rebellion and all the ungodliness that goes on in the world. But I want you to know that God has sent us out there to be faithful to him, to, to live the life, trust him in what we do, and believe that he can work it out. I can't work it out. That's why I just went ahead and came anyway this morning. I know I'm going to have to do something I can't do, but I just trust God he's going to. You see what I mean? And so young people, for you in school, wherever you are, God is there. He is concerned about you. He knows you, and he's with you. Then we, as Ezekiel, are sent to an impotent un, um, uh, people who are just don't care, have no respect for nothing. I think that is a, something that's hard for me, is the lack of respect that we see in our world. I saw a guy the other day, and I can't remember where it was. I wish I could remember, but oh, I know where it was. It was in the courthouse. And this guy had a hat, and he had it in his hand. And he, he walked by me, and I said to him, I see you're carrying your hat. He said, I'm in a place of honor, and I ought to respect it. And I said, well, I'll bet you you'd take your hat off if you went to church too, wouldn't you? He said, I most certainly would. And he said, I also do that in my mama's house. Isn't that interesting? I know that's a little thing, but we've lost respect for God's house, if nothing else. I mean, there are people who've lost respect for their own personal bodies. Look at them. Oh, and I'm going to step on some toes here. We've kind of lost some respect in the way we casually come to church. I saw one morning in a church service, I swear this young lady had her PJs still on. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's out there. I mean, it, it, people don't care. Go to Walmart. I don't because I don't need to look at that. I mean, comb your hair. Brush your teeth. Clean up the place from where you live a little bit. Get the yard picked up. Mow the yard. I believe it's honoring to the Lord to do that. And boy, there's a lot of trash and a lot of junk in a lot of Christians' yards. Wash the car, even though it's a jalopy, it'll look better. Good stewardship is something we need in Christian life. I never intended to get on that, ladies and gentlemen. This is really going to be a long message. So, but it's disrespectful, and we're losing that all the time. I had my grandsons when they were younger. Why, one of them would walk in front of me. I said, wait a minute, son, you're not walking in front of me. You, you can be beside me or behind me. You can't walk in front of me. I'm the older guy. I know that's narrow-minded, but I think it's good stuff. And that boy's turned out pretty good. And so we, 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 it's not the norm, and people look at you like there's something wrong with you, but you just stand anyway, all right? Now, I've gone through three points of this message, and i got a little bit of time. And here's what I want to talk to you about. How do we embrace the call of God in our lives? I feel like Charles Stanley right now, because he would be one of those guys that could lay it out really. And this is practical for us, ladies and gentlemen, is that God wants us to embrace him in our daily lives so that we can be a a an instrument of the kingdom of God wherever we are and that people can see Jesus in us. I've mentioned some of this stuff um, that we could do. If you were going to go visit someone or go out and eat with them, you would kind of clean up, comb your hair and all that stuff. Well, listen, I think you just ought to do that and make that a practice in your daily life, the way you present yourself to lost people. I've seen some Christians that I'd be ashamed to call them Christians. The way they were sharing the gospel was okay, but the way they were dressed and the way they were acting was horrible. I mean, I got a responsibility to, to, to be a, a man and you ladies and women of God, boys and girls, to act in a way that honors the Lord. And then people will pay attention to you. They won't otherwise. You're just another one of the weirdos. Boy, I could go a long way down this road, but I'm going to stop, all right? But I think that, <clears throat> first of all, we got to decide 
that we can be and that God wants us to be an instrument of his work in our daily lives and in the community and in the families and in the church where we live. Now, you do that by being obedient to the Word of God and trusting God. Now, I just shared with you that it's difficult, isn't it, to do that every moment of every day. I mean, I look over this congregation. Some of you are facing some things you don't want to face, right? You've got some things that are going to happen you're concerned about. You've got, you've got family issues. I got them. Um, and how do, I, how do I best stand for the cause of Christ in those situations? But first of all, remember earlier I said if you have a pure heart and your desire is to honor the Lord, that's the first step in growing in your relationship with the Lord. Now here's what I desire, and I've told you this before here at this church is, is that people would grow in their relationship. And I've been seeing some things happening among some of you. I'm watching. I really am. And I've had some of you say to me, you know, I think maybe God may be leading me a certain way. I love to hear that. That is just wonderful. And, and maybe some of you never said anything, but you know that you need to be walking closer to the Lord. Maybe you need to pick up the Bible on a more regular basis. Maybe you need to pay attention when the preacher's preaching. I don't see anybody with that problem. Really, I don't. But Sunday school... I would encourage you to go to Sunday school. We've got some good teachers here, and there's some good discussion going on that will help you because those people are going through the same struggles you are. I like to hear that somebody else, I'm not the only one's got a problem, and it encourages me. And, and, and sometimes when I, I saw this happen not too long ago in one of our Sunday school classes, there was a need that was, was, was shared, and a, a person got up and after the class and went over and shared with that person. They'd be glad to help. They could do something to help. Isn't that wonderful? And, and there's so many ways that we can do it. Um, so you begin the process, ladies and gentlemen, and then... When you do that, the Holy Spirit goes along with you, and you begin to see that God is working in your life. You're faithful to Him. Now, for us old folks, we got a few here. We've been serving the Lord a long time. I can go back and look in my own life and see the Holy Spirit reminds me. Sometimes I've even had the Holy Spirit reveal something to me that happened 30 years ago that I'd never thought about, and I saw that He revealed to me that he was working in that moment. Well, what was wrong with me 30 years ago that I didn't figure that out? But that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes alongside to encourage us and to help us in our relationship with him. It's not easy. God never said it was. He didn't tell Ezekiel that, did he? He said, it's going to be tough, boy. And they may or, he didn't say they'll listen to you. He said, they may or may not, they are a rebellious people, he said. It's interesting the way God worded that. And so it's not about the response of people. Now, I don't know about you, but I like a little encouragement once in a while. And I try to tell my wife, if she makes a, some meal, I try to tell her that was pretty doggone good. Keep that up. And um, really, I, quite honestly, I can't say that she has made, although she did make some vegetable soup the other day. I'm not a vegetable soup guy. I don't like cooked vegetables. I like them raw, okay, like the crunch. But I try to encourage her. And this morning, this morning when I told her that I don't know how I'm going to do what I'm going to do, I can't do it. And you know what she said? Well, you know who's going to help you. <laughs> that little bit went a long way. So I decided, okay, I'll get up out of bed now, and I'll go to church. But honestly, that's the way we are sometimes. This world is a struggle. I mean, I, I yesterday accomplished one thing that I had on my mind for almost 10 days, and we got it done. One down, more to go. But just trusting the Lord that all of this has worked out in the past why can't I trust him right now for it? Amen? 
And so today, I'm going to end this message right now. If you are in, I want you to think about your walk with Christ, what he wants you to do. That doesn't mean you're going to be where I'm at. You're in a different, all of you people are in, live different places and your responsibilities are different and what God's called you in your life is different. Only you knew what, know what it is. Don't come and ask me, you think God wants me to do this? I'm not going to say I don't have a clue. It's up to you and God. And in your home that you remain faithful to the Lord. I, I, I think some of you today that are even older than me, life is a struggle, isn't it? Do you feel like you want to give up and just set back in the lazy boy from now on? I can relate to that. But you got to get up. You know, God hadn't called you home yet. And wherever you are in your life, in your profession, whether you need to retire, I don't know what you need to do, but that you do what God wants you to do. And we've got people here that are younger that you've got your life ahead of you. You need to be faithful to the Lord. I found out this morning that Kyle and Stacy are celebrating their 34th wedding anniversary. I don't, can't get over that. You know what I mean? But guess what happened? It did, didn't it? And those years have slipped by. And I'm sure we'd all love to take some of them back, do a better job. So let's commit ourselves. There, here's the great thing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will forgive and set you right back on the right road going back to serving him. He's always got forgiveness for us, ladies and gentlemen, when you turn and ask him and ask him to forgive. That's a great God, isn't it? <clears throat> I heard a story this week. You know, we've been talking about um, sharing our testimonies with somebody. And this week I was visiting someone, and they shared their testimony with me. It's the most amazing testimony, and it was from somebody you would have never guessed. I'm hoping I can get that person one day to stand up here in this pulpit and tell that story. But that person also told me about when they got saved and then told me about another person that got saved who I had never met in my life. I knew who they, they were, and I wondered about them, but I believe one day we'll see them in heaven. It I left that situation, and the Lord showed me and a tear started coming down my eyes to think that someone I didn't know and wondered their family never went to church but got saved in the same situation they was. i tell you, that's neat, isn't it? I mean, is there anybody that God can't save? No. He'll only save those that won't be saved. They're the only ones. He'll save anybody when you call upon him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you this morning, as we give this invitation, for you to give thought about your relationship to the Lord. Is it what it ought to be? And we could all say, no, it's not. But maybe we need to step up a little higher, get, be challenged a little bit more than we ever have before to be faithful to him and let him accomplish what he wants to accomplish in us. It's not about us. You remember Victoria Osteen said, it's all about us. No, it isn't, Victoria. Lie, lie, lie. It's about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we honor him. And when they bring me into this auditorium and I'm dead as a corp, I hope they'll say that he was faithful to the Lord to the very end. It was all about God, not about me. And, and I hope my family will be reminded of the things that I stood for and they will maybe make a new commitment they'd never had before to follow the Lord. You don't know how God's going to work in this life, but be faithful. I had to have a good, really good talk with one of my grandsons yesterday. I did not want to have it, but he had some need, and I questioned some things. And I'm going to help him, but I wanted him to know that there are some standards that I expect from him. You see what I mean? He said, boy, you're a mean old rascal. He got what he asked for. I helped him, but he had to listen to me. So my friend today Will you be faithful to the Lord? I don't know what that means this week for you in your life. But I believe God wants to work here at Thompsonville. I'm anxious to see what God wants to do. I'm praying for a lot of different things here in this church. But I hope you'll consider about what I can do for the cause of Christ and understand that it has value. Now, I want to ask you a question. 
Are you saved today? You can't accomplish anything in your life apart from a knowledge and a salvation of your soul. And Jesus will save you. And today, if you're here, I probably the Holy Spirit is dealing with you in some way. I hope you'll respond. Come down here. I'll pray with you. Or after service, you want to come to me, I'll be more than happy to pray with you and show you how to be saved. Maybe as Christians, that you have something that you need to commit. Maybe you, you do that at your, your uh, pew there where you're at. But maybe God's dealing with you. Would you respond and let him have his way in your life? Let's stand for a word of prayer. Father.